This is Kingdom Sound TV. You are welcome. On this channel, we will share content of our father and mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman. As you listen, remain ever blessed. Thank you. Seasons. Are we together? Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Please, the guy on the media, if you would help us so that when we mention the scripture, you can go there as fast as you can. Uh, God bless you so that you will help us to redeem time. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Colossians 4 and verse 17. Let me just quote it for time's sake. It says, Say unto Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received, not from a church, not from a pastor. It says, You receive that ministry in the Lord that thou fulfill it. Say unto Joshua Selman, Say unto the leaders and the pastors in Enugu State and the Southeast, take heed. Take heed means pay attention to the ministry which thou hast received of the Lord, that thou fulfill it. One last scripture. Psalm 78 and verse 72. Psalm 78 and verse 72. Speaking about David. The Bible says, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. So two things were at play here. Number one was the integrity of his heart. But number two, the skillfulness of his hands. Ministry in the end time will require a an interplay of many factors please listen in every generation god will always find a people and apportion them across territories now according to god's modus operandi you have to understand this his his kingdom come agenda is territorial in nature that means even though you are called to the whole world but he apportions your impact according to territories so he says you shall be witnesses unto me acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he would have just said all over the earth that would have been clear enough but he now said jerusalem samaria judea and then to the uttermost part of the earth are we together that means in the mind of god no territory should lack apostolic and prophetic voices that coordinates the spiritual activity over that territory you will know when a territory is bankrupt of spiritual leaders because there are certain things that will not be in place spiritual leadership in god's economy is more powerful than political leadership because they are the shapers of the spiritual understanding of a people so when you see a widespread error or a widespread prevalent of prevalence of darkness within a territory the spiritual leaders in that territory are to be held responsible every territory should have a strong presence of apostolic and prophetic voices when i talk of apostolic voices i'm not talking title but you hope i understand what i'm saying yes so any good state we can go around the length and breadth of this city and bring back a report card of the extent the quality and the efficiency of the spiritual leaders within the city when you find a city where darkness has been driven away you find a city where the crime rate is minimal you find a city with responsible young men who are lovers of god and also agents of national transformation that state will be credited to the quality and the understanding of the spiritual leaders when you find a lopsided spiritual view for instance when you find a territory where people are men and women of prayer and fasting but are highly irresponsible people that also is a reflection of the quality of the teachings that come from the altar when you find people who love money and love the things of this world and do not concentrate on their spiritual health it is also a reflection of the quality of the teachings africa is the most religious continent all over the world and 
Africans and Nigerians and people from all of these regions are very loyal to their spiritual leaders. That means that every spiritual leader, especially in the fivefold ministry, has a rare advantage of shaping the spiritual understanding of people. It matters what about God was told you. It matters the construction of your spiritual understanding. Because it becomes the basis upon which your conviction stands. Are we together? So ministry is a very serious business. Because destinies are at the mercy of not the truth you give, but how you communicate it. Truth is like a knife. You can still use it to kill. Are we blessed? You've always heard me talk about the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth. Just because it is true and just because it is in the Bible does not mean it will profit you by default. It's profiting is in the order of priority. When we overstress things that are minors, are we together now? And then we major on minors and minor on majors. For instance, that in itself can destroy the saints. So I give you an instance. According to God's system, when you get born again now I, I don't i don't mean to be negative or to be sarcastic when you get born again the first message you should not you should listen to is not wealth and prosperity because at that time you are still a carnal person the impulses of the flesh is still alive in you you have not come to a point whereby the instrument of the ministry of the holy spirit you have not been broken enough to hand over everything to christ so chances are that when if all the message you hear from that point of infancy is just prosperity and all of that if you are not careful all that will happen to you is just a marketing of lust are we together now because you have not yet been taught kingdom so the purpose of that wealth and prosperity has not even been known so chances are you will be lying down on every car you see claiming it and saying in the name of jesus and and it doesn't mean you are a sinner it just means you are immature the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth is as important as the truth itself the bible says line upon line precept upon precept there is something that when you know teaching you about prosperity now becomes very profitable there is something that if you know teaching you about marriage or about influence now becomes profitable there is something that if you know teaching you about ministry administration and excellence is important but when as a minister if all you know for instance is just administration principles and excellence as wonderful as that is you will produce a very lopsided uh, people because all that they will be concerned about is just the physical appearance i'm looking good everything is working fine and they will be lean and dead and hungry spiritually so there is need for the sequential arrangement of spiritual truth so that it can profit the believer but my point here is that every territory is a reflection of the kind and the quality and even the presence of the spiritual leaders there if you're with me say amen, amen. when Satan wants to destroy a territory he does not necessarily go to every house house by house to plague people that's too much work for him all he needs to do is to limit the spiritual understanding of the leaders so that their communications are lopsided and on the strength of that aberrated view they will continue to mentor people outside their limitation and so after a long period of time you will find out that a dimension of the kingdom is not represented in that territory respectfully speaking there are territories when you go to you look around that territory you find out that the spirit of prayer is not strong in that territory when you see a corporate deficiency it came from the leaders there are territories where the giving grace is very small it is a reflection of the biases of those who have mentored the people within that territory there are territories when you go to marriages absolutely do not work for instance there are territories when you go to there is bankruptcy of high level spiritual intelligence because what we consume is out of what we are fed with are we together 
so a pastor's conference is very necessary because it helps to file us to open us to greater doors of spiritual understanding Paul was speaking to the church in Colossae chapter 1 and verse 9 Colossians 1 verse 9 he prayed a prayer that we be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom and number three spiritual understanding these are the boundaries of our growth are we together and many people continue to wonder why it looks like even though there are many pastors in a territory many well-meaning sincere men of god who love god with all their hearts it looks like the dimension of kingdom reality and the forcefulness of the kingdom is not captured in our experience we do not yet see the manifestation of the kingdom the power and the glory of god to the degree that should be seen and when i talk of the power of god i'm not just talking of shouting and falling down i'm talking of the reality of the kingdom superimposing culture superimposing our territories are we together now and so i want to share with us within these few minutes a few keys that have helped me in my life these are not just my experiences number one they are principles that are consistent with the character of god number two they are wisdom keys that have come from the life of proven patriarchs many of them who have gone to be with the lord i had the privilege of receiving a very balanced mentorship from strong people across the body of christ many who have now gone to be with the lord and i'm grateful and honored for the privilege to have received these pieces and these dimensions from them because they define the coordinate of balance for me and it helped me to be efficient today as a minister it is important that we are balanced imbalance is worse than error are we together number one I have found out from scripture and from the lives of men and women who have been mightily used by God and continue to be used by God across the globe that there are certain essentials that must be in the life of a minister in order for him to be very efficient and to be productive and to be a worthy host of the power the grace the glory of God number one very quickly i'll be as simple as possible so that we can pray our time is gone the first that i found out is called the fear of the lord the fear of the lord this is the highest representation of your love and your passion for god the fear of the lord first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 if you love god sincerely and you are passionate about him it must be reflected in your reverence for him he says but as it is written so this is written and remember anything that is written cannot be changed i have not seen that means this dimension we are getting to even the spirit of revelation those who walk in that dimension of revelation cannot access this number two nor ear heard there is a dimension of the prophetic that cannot get to this realm it says neither has it entered into the heart of man there is a level of understanding and illumination that cannot take you there the things that god has prepared not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for apostles and prophets for them that love him now the way god operates is that there is a body of light that is given to everyone in the kingdom but there is the hallowed bread of the spirit that is not accessible to everyone this one is a reward as a token of your passion and your press towards the things of god i assure you not everything in the kingdom is public 
there are dimensions of spiritual reality that are not gifts they are rewards they come to you for your dedicated press towards the things of the spirit that god can hold your hand and take you to the hollow chambers of the spirit and begin to show you the mysteries that make for dominion over territories and over nations eye has not seen ear has not heard notice it never mentioned the name of a man of god here notice it never even mentioned a minister that there is a level of the fear of the lord there is a level of your love and your passion for god passion greater than fame passion greater than ministry passion greater than church passion greater than apostle joshua selman passion greater than the applause of men our obsession for recognition our obsession to be known our obsession for a name if not called may become our unbecoming as far as our rising in ministry is concerned there is a requisite level of humility and recognition that a servant of god must carry in order to host superior dimensions of spiritual things many times we brag and we boast about many things we do not have the grace to defend just knowing that this is a possibility in the kingdom and teaching it is one thing but sustaining the grace required God I pray and even now on this stage I'm saying it may it never come to me I don't care what it is I can drop this mic a thousand times to preserve my relationship with God I will kick my reputation like a football and let it go places if I will preserve his presence I'm saying this because especially for some of us who are younger in ministry when you see people celebrate Joshua Selman you see people clap and they're happy ushers people are coming there is this drive this ambition my God and that ambition is what will lead you to a 40-day prayer and fasting and you think just because you are fasting it means you are correct you may be sincere but from day one the motif is already corrupted the motif is not the revelation of the Christ is an attempt to fast a complex you have been having for a long time and so you have learned that the anointing is the cure for that complex and you go up the mountain and sometimes you encounter demons and familiar spirits and come down from that experience with something that will begin another cause of destruction Holy Ghost My body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Listen, the real secret of being in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on your relationship with God. That is how to remain transgenerationally relevant. See, there are people who rise up and in certain seasons they are relevant. And you know, men of God, let me share something with you and I know you will agree with me. The world of men is a wicked world. It's like you have a time period of fame. Everybody will invite you everywhere. Men will suck you like an orange. You are in every conference. You are in every convention. And sometimes we are beguiled to think that because that window of opportunity is open. It's necessarily a fact that you have a good relationship with God. After a few years, you fade like a leaf. And the people who once said, make become king over us who say crucify him they will push you aside and look for the next most important thing so be 
before you fall into the deception of men and members stay close to the one that speaks closer than a friend church can fail members can love you today and hate you tomorrow i'm not saying they are wrong and i'm not saying it should be so it's amazing how people leave god and run to men whose emotional vacillations cannot even be predicted oh apostle joshua selman i love you you have never seen me angry you have never seen me hungry you don't know what problems are in my life you love what you are seeing let me go to the one who loves all of me he has seen all of me and has chosen to love me with an everlasting love holy ghost holy ghost Take your place. Listen. Listen to me. I respond to an average of five to six hundred text messages every day. People sending me text messages from around the world. I wake up with text messages and call. My phone is never off. Even as I'm on stage here, it's on silent. And most of it is the accolades of men. What manner of a man of God are you? I just listened to your message. Apostle, can you come for this conference? And sometimes I keep these text messages and I just look at them. Hmm. This is what brings down mighty men. This is what destroys the great. This is what cuts short the relevance of men. And you know, while, uh, while all that drama is happening, sometimes I go on YouTube myself and I'm watching all the videos. Joshua Selman, Joshua Selman, and I stare at it. I say, oh God, may this deception never get into my heart. May I never forget in my life that without you, I can do nothing. Deliver me from this demon called ministry and keep me loving you all the days of my life. There is a call called ministry, but there is a demon too called ministry. The spirit of religion you will give up his presence a thousand times to maintain a show of being okay before men. I hope you like what I'm saying. You see, you can fake this thing before men, but there is the all-seeing eye of the ancient of days. The one who marks the scripts of men and vets the sincerity of your passion. It is not so much about your eloquence. I believe me, when God's jealousy comes upon your life, even you, you will see the gaps in your understanding and yet he will pick you all the same. Because in his economy, he does not need creativity, he needs yieldedness. When he finds you, he will be the one to give you the grace for the creativity. When it has to do with the pursuit of God, creativity is not needed. It's your surrender and your hunger. It's when you need to legislate on behalf of His Majesty. That is where creativity is needed. One of the biggest secrets in my life, I will tell you, is my love for God. It's not fasting alone. It's not prayer alone. It's not spiritual knowledge alone. Yes, I know you are always reading the Bible. But is it not because you have an itinerary that is packed full? So you are reading quickly because your ego is at stake. And you need to defend the perceptions people have about you. No, sir. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you. Change my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Change my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Listen. <laughs> when you stand on stage, and you begin to make bold claims that only a relationship should produce you will be disappointed 
many times our secret place is is absent of fellowship and yet we stand on stage and say oh my god my maker the one who will heal people here and there is a strange incense rising from your voice to heaven and heaven is saying when did this one start this is a strange i'm not used to you calling me this name you, you are not a person of the secret place from where did you start imagine a man i always give this example i'm sure there is a name reverend dan calls his wife that is a product of intimacy are we together now if he does not have a healthy relationship with her and stands on stage right now you're not used to calling your wife honey or sweetheart and just for the sake of your reputation you call her honey the way she will respond to you you too you will know you are lying what should be an object of intimacy is now a strange incense is is pungent because it was not from the purity of your heart how many of us can call upon god and says this is a familiar voice this is a voice whose altar is known and seen in the realm of the spirit do you not know that when you call upon him demons too here they are witnesses of your communion your love for god please hear me it is good to be ambitious but i bring you to a place where your love for god must supersede your desire some of you now have your small groups your small fellowship and you're about killing yourself now because your ego wants to kill you leave all those things and focus on his presence listen to what i'm telling you it will never tire me to say it here i never had a desire for ministry bishop sir i never had a desire for fame or going around the world doing these things it still is not my desire till today you made me great it's a song i wrote for him you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you this has been one of the few years that i've had the privilege to really rest aside from covid i don't spend two full weeks in a year at home i sleep in the plane i wake up there i don't respond to up to 30 percent of the invitations that come because i cannot cope and sometimes i'm so tired and i'm asking why are you doing all this then i remember it is not for fame oh. it's not to make a name my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you forget about greatness in the spirit if all you are looking for is a passion to outshine others a passion for a name so that they say joshua selman that great man oh no you miss it already i assure you the justice system of god vets your motif till he finds himself in you god is not a politician that you just come and play politics around your love and your passion for god listen to me man of god woman of god hear me i do not doubt the call upon your life i do not doubt the fact that truly his grace is upon you and make no mistakes you are not even aware of how far his majesty can take you when he invests his jealousy upon your life but this morning leave ministry let's focus on that altar no more prayer why i am busy i'm trying to reach the world 
no more prayer oh i have sons and daughters i must mentor and while all that activity is happening heaven is watching you and saying was this why you fasted five years ago was this why you rolled on the floor five years ago was this all you were looking for a jeep and a five-star hotel is that the circumference of your passion for me my best lord everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you it is my desire to live as long as i can live serving the purposes of the kingdom but if i die today let it be that yes i did not finish my assignment but let it not be that i misled a generation that even when i'm there seated in heaven rejoicing at his feet let it be that every truth that the earth listens to from me is helping to introduce them to me my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you your love for god you are a worship minister and you are asking apostle how can i go around the nations you know every time people see me their first question is how can i get a double portion of this anointing and and in all fairness i don't mean to be sarcastic but many times it's just because they are disturbing me i just lay my hands and let them go even me i know nothing came on them even if they fell down it's just so that they will just allow me go otherwise they can tear my clothes or something so i just allow them but me and god we both know that nothing really happened there you know what it means to receive a man's grace you must receive his hunger too you must receive a man's love stop receiving impartations without finding out the hunger of men you will only be wasting your time your hunger and your passion is the bowl you receive to receive that anointing there are anointings when you receive you cannot sleep like a normal human being again so before you cry for that anointing ask yourself first am i that yielded that you can be tired and just when you are about to sleep his majesty comes and says get up we need to talk and for the next five hours you are with him while others are snoring you are crying and praying over people you do not know that's what it takes to be anointed my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you years ago the lord told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you leave that celebrity ambition i am telling you please listen to me be careful who you listen to and be careful don't criticize people don't go around the body of christ fighting men of god don't do that whether you are right or wrong you will bring judgment on yourself i assure you correcting the body of christ is an office not everybody who observes wrong just goes around correcting no there is an office and the first requirement is not awareness it is love right now everybody is correcting everybody no we're all going to mess up and create another kind of error we'll create another hybrid of error that would destroy younger generations coming please hear me you want to rise higher in the spirit you want to be given grace and power more than your prayer and fasting more than your bible study your heart years ago the lord asked me a question and said son can you die for me i know many of you will say yes i come from the north i know the meaning of that question i thought about it sincerely and i said no i've been persecuted many times for you but i don't know if i can die for you and god did something in my heart i stand before you and good to tell you this man you see is already a dead man for for me to live is christ and if i die it is still gay when you see god using a man find out why don't just 
say oh this is wonderful no the price of life is death death is the currency you use to buy life so when you say you want life the demand is not money the demand is not your certificate the demand is death as proof of your love are we together now most of the challenges we have in the body of Christ come because there is no fear of the Lord not because there is ignorance the fear of the Lord whether it is manipulation whether it is whatever it is a product of lack of the fear of God when you truly fear God with all your heart let me tell you sincerely please look at me when you fear God sincerely you will not ask people to fast and then you are eating fish in your room are we together now no you are not going to ask for a vigil and then you are there sleeping too not because anybody will flog you your fear the fear of the Lord insists that you are right and you are true can we pray over this can we turn what I've just said into a prayer point listen I know that our time is gone but in two minutes I don't know how you are going to cry to God take this idol this idol in my heart this obsession for fame and power today we have enemies that are needless in life and ministry because my ego was strong my reputation was strong only dead men can carry God oh the size of God is so heavy if you are alive it will kill you only dead men can carry him your love and your passion lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray in one minute from the depth of your heart when you love the Lord you will love his sheep when you love the Lord you will not only use members you will love them sincerely a pastor after his heart a worship leader after his heart a deacon after his heart an apostle after his heart a prophet after his heart purge my heart oh God don't be embarrassed by your prayer don't be embarrassed by your cry one minute you are praying don't be ashamed of your tears I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow to you to no other God but you Lord Lord I will worship you nothing has but you Hallelujah. Your love for him. The grand secret to see his hand upon your life. I love, I love. I love your presence I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you Jesus I love, I love I love your presence 
Listen, when you love the Lord, you know that all I have belong to Him. Find a way of believing what I'm telling you. You can listen to the messages of any man of God you want to hear. You can put it in your ears and sleep overnight in an attempt to receive anointing. You will never get anything until heaven vets the sincerity of your motive. Your love and your passion for God. I love him with everything that is within me. Believe me when I tell you this. It is still an honor for me today to be doing that which I do for his majesty. But it was never about it. Never about it. When people were complaining about the pandemic because, you know, it enclosed people. Now, of course, I, I do not like the fact that people's lives were halted. But for me, I almost didn't know when the lockdown was over because it was a most cherished opportunity. Lord, this is an opportunity again to catch up on my love for you. That ministry schedules may not even allow me to spend that time. When all is said and done, please take it down for me. I feel like singing that song. Can you say go down my voice? When it's all is said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? To live for truth did I live my life for you not the empires you built when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find precious joy in married clay Turning sinners into saints And I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after For you've shown me heaven's my true home When it's all been said and done You're my life when life is done. Do you love him? Simon Bajona Lovest thou me more than this? Man of God, it is true that there is a great unction upon your life. I'm not asking you if you can preach. I know you can. I'm not asking you if you can heal. I know you can. I'm not asking you if you can sing. You are already a powerful worshiper. I'm not asking you if you have the spirit of revelation. We know you do. I'm not asking you if you can prophesy. Your prophetic grace has been proven. My question is to what degree do you love him? Woe betides the day that I exalt anything above him. Woe betides that day. May it never come and may it never happen. Not today, not in my lifetime. Number two, please bring the vessels. The second key, for time's sake, I thought I would give three, but I would just give two. Our time is gone.
the second key to a life of power a life of grace and glory is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the power that comes from him Acts chapter 1 verse 8 I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me yeah. I, 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 Listen, the system of the kingdom is such that you cannot do the work of the kingdom by the strength of the flesh. The Bible already observes that by the strength of the flesh shall no man prevail. Ministry is a task that requires more than secular intelligence. You will face persecution. You will be misunderstood. God will give you instructions that will create controversy around your life. It will take more than psychological stamina to survive end time ministry. You will need an empowerment that comes from heaven. Every time God called people into the work of the ministry, He did not allow them go like that. He insisted until the power of the highest came upon them. In Acts chapter 1, when you read from verse 7, Jesus was mentoring them for 40 more days after his resurrection. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Then verse 8 says, but you shall receive. Anything to receive can be rejected. You shall receive power after not before not during so the first thing you receive is not power it is a personality the holy ghost and then when his workings prevails over your life the reward for that intimacy is power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you the power does not make you a man of god the power does not make you a prophet the power does not make you an apostle the power does not make you a worshiper the power makes you a witness a witness is a validator of a claim there is no need for a witness until there is a contention in the court of law when you when there is a contention over a claim a witness is necessitated and its assignment is to validate that which has been said in this end time God is looking for witnesses more than men of God more than apostles and prophets validators men and women who will bring the pride of nations to their knees and reveal a dimension of the excellency of the kingdom that confounds principalities and powers like I said yesterday to come on the strength of our spiritual connection in a few minutes something is going to come upon your life an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities our spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advance is based on covenant that means that God finds a people and enters a personal covenant with them that becomes his access point to reveal that dimension on earth and all through within the lifetime of those individuals God will never manifest that possibility anywhere on earth in disalignment to those vessels understand what I'm teaching you when it comes to the matters of the spirit and the anointing I'm not teaching you an outsource information this is an office 
I know what I'm talking about. One time, I started having encounters with the saints of old. Now, understand that every time we teach these things, the Bible is the foundational pattern for our spiritual growth. When we share these supernatural experiences, it's not to create a passion in you higher than your love for scripture. Are we together now? These are only systems that support the things that scripture had said. I remember I started having encounters with many of those you call the generals. And they would come to me and share mysteries. And some of them would share with me where they failed in their own generation. I remember in one of these encounters, a middle height man came to me and after talking, the light that beamed from him. And when we were done talking, he turned and he was on his way going. And I looked at him and I said, you did not tell me your name, sir. And he looks at me and turns back and smiles. And he said, Paul. And he turned and walked away. I am a product of many anointings. I am a product of many encounters. Years ago, I started searching for those who carried the mantle of the generals because I felt that there was a burden upon my life for this generation. And I wanted to become a system of preservation and continuity of the program of God. And one of the people I met began to tell me a story. You've heard me say it many times. That before Smith Wigglesworth would die, he called Lester Sumro and said, Do not die with this mantle. When you are old, find young men and transfer this grace upon them. And when he laid hands on me, he said, You will become a continuity of these graces. This is like a relay, it has come from one person to the other the chiefest of all encounters was when the Lord Jesus himself now appeared to me we're about to pray something will happen now when I begin to say what I'm saying that's why I say be sensitive because God gave me a promise and there is a covenant I have with him when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was flat on the floor light in its brilliance came from him to me he did not speak with his mouth but he was talking to me I knew what he was saying then in one of the encounters help that gentleman please the Lord spoke to me and said son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this huge angel and the Lord said this angel will walk with you he's called the angel of the Lord's presence and he will be responsible for the signs the wonders the miracles Listen to me, dear men of God. The Lord gave me an instruction years ago. And he said, every nation, every city and every territory I send you to. Among the many things you will do there. Make sure the light that came from me to you. There must be someone in that meeting. That the light that came from me to you. Will also come upon those people. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Open up 
up again. Listen. After that encounter, I took my Bible and I started understanding things I never studied. There was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I would go to bed and angels would come to my room and open my Bible to specific scriptures. I don't share a lot of my encounters because I don't want people to create idolatry out of these things. Our assignment is to promote Jesus and to lift him. Tonight is a miracle service. We are still going to pray for people. But please hear me. For someone here in the next few minutes, something is about to come upon your life and your destiny that will so change you in a way and manner that will surprise you. Many of you will go back to your churches and you will marvel and wonder at the dimension of the spirit that you begin to walk in. This is not for personal or vain glory. This is to equip us so that we stop becoming noisemakers. We become people with evidence indeed. There is too much talking in the body of Christ. I say this respectfully. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. Here and there I would give a word of knowledge. But I heard them criticizing a man of God called William Branham. Men of God always talked about that man and tore him and tore him as if he missed God and missed everything. And one night I was watching his video and I said, my God, look at the humility of this man. There are few men on earth that I know today, including myself, who come close to the humility of this man with respect to the kind of glory that he carried. And yet people are there tearing the man down. And suddenly something happened to me. Light right from him in the laptop where I was watching. And something came upon me. And for a period of about 30 minutes, it was going down my body. I said, what is happening to me? And by the next meeting I went to, the heavens were open in a way and manner. I received a grace, not only a grace that reveals, a grace that creates. So that what has no business happening is made to happen. Please don't think what I'm saying is pride. I wish I'm not the one to. I hope you don't misunderstand me. I, I, I do not trivialize anybody's grace here. I'm only sharing with you something by the privilege of the election of grace. I have been to almost every campground in this nation. I am a product of many anointings. I've had the privilege of and the honor of receiving graces from fathers, from mighty men and women of God, dead and alive. That anointing was invested upon me not for my sake, but for the sake of God's people and every time we come for conferences like this among the many things that happen is an opportunity to distribute graces that are either dormant or vacant within a land to the end that there be a greater establishment of the purposes of God not to show that a man of God is anointed but hear me there is a spiritual protocol to receiving the anointing you do not receive from a colleague you do not receive from a friend there is a non-negotiable law of spiritual transference you must discern not in the flesh in the spirit and Elisha said my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof I know that men of God 
sadly have idolized this issue of impartation you know and made a lot of nonsense and immaturity out of it but i tell you the truth if all you see is a man in the flesh you will not receive anything your spirit must be opened to receive something that will change your life we have five ten minutes to do this i'm going to pray on this oil as a point of contact please help that person there there are angels that signify dimensions there are angels that signify anointings there are angels that signify revelations revelations 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he sent it and signified it by his angel many of you will be drinking into ancient fountains dimensions you have seen in your dreams you have seen in your visions some of you you have seen it for many years and you've been asking lord when will this come i open to you by the spirit a portal of higher spiritual reality Now arise, O oh Lord, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness, we celebrate your love. Spirit of the living God, I pray over this oil. I only stand by the privilege of the election of grace. And I pray over your precious people in this place. Lord, I pray that this oil will activate virgin dimensions in the spirit. I pray that ancient fountains will be opened over your people. And that everyone under the sound of my voice, upon whom this oil comes, let it be a strange impartation. Let the spirit of grace and the spirit of glory, let the unction for signs, for wonders, for miracles, territorial anointings, rest upon your people. Please, please, I want you to respect all the servants of God. Don't come around them. Just leave them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, they have the option whether or not they can touch the oil or not or they can receive the air. Let's give them that honor as servants of God. But wherever you are, the oil will be there. You will just come out to your row. So guys, you will just stand in front of the various rows from the front just come out touch and then go back come out touch and go back let there be a few ushers for those who will be under the anointing the ushers can receive the impartation last can they open this thing? You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed In the name of Jesus Christ, we anoint these oils. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
now listen hold on please um reverend has requested that it should be given um a bowl i would respectfully honor it and so please some of these people especially to serve the ministers please allow a man of god a father of faith so please the fathers can serve just please give give one of any of the pastors thank you so much sir we honor your humility sir thank you please make sure the all the people holding this if you're doing that please withdraw it let a man of god you you they don't need to come out you can just walk around with it for them there if it's possible but in the name of jesus please come out now some of you as soon as you touch that oil please stand turn and face them okay go ahead please touch it and then turn back to your seat in the name of jesus the power of the holy ghost is coming upon you as you touch it you return back begin to pray in the spirit Shake it, Barata Katusha, the Barata Barata. Shebranda Kaparuta Shada Kaskabela. New dimension. Someone begin to pray and prophesy over your life and your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak over your ministry. I step into new dimensions of kingdom relevance. 
great power for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I prophesy by the mighty hand of God, signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man, come. Lift your hands. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands here. I'm seeing fire come on you. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Selabots kabarandas kabris katabareta sila parudias. Please pray, don't be distracted. My friend, lift your hands. Take that grace. Lift your hands. Prophesy over your ministry. My ministry can never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Salvation for His Majesty. The miracle ministry. No more stagnation. No more delay. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of power upon my life. Numerical growth. Financial growth. Access to the power of God. your hands I'm still going to speak in the night but this is a pastor session in the name of Jesus I want you to believe every word that is coming upon your life for if you will believe you will be surprised at what happens to you every dead ministry or every dying ministry hear the word of the Lord I speak to you Talita Kumi arise in the name of Jesus Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire. Prayer fire. The grace to fast. The grace to study. Take that anointing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. One of the tools that the devil is using in this end time to cripple ministries is lack of the availability of financial resources. There are many people who love God with all their hearts, but the devil keeps crippling the finances of well-meaning churches so that they will not have the wherewithal to preach. But I stand tonight in the name of Jesus and I prophesy to you, as surely as the Lord God lives, I invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies. Strange supplies. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the south and the north. Everywhere your supplies are in this season, I command it into your hands. 
Listen. There are many of us, you love the Lord, but there are things that are eating your life. They are making you not to be a man of solid character. You love God, but these things continue to destroy your ministry. Every altar that sponsors anything that is not of the Christ, destroying your reputation in ministry. I command those altars, catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Members come to your church. They receive of the miracles. They receive of the word. And then they leave. They come but the grace that keeps. The grace that stays people is not there. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your life. Receive the grace for retention. Hallelujah. A man of God must be sound in doctrine. A man of God must be able to teach truth with clarity and balance. There's someone here you have been praying for the spirit of revelation. Sincerely because you love your people. I pray for you. Like fire from heaven. May that grace rest upon you now. Now, I thought I'll be able to do that prayer in the night, but the Lord is asking me to do it here. There is a grace for signs and wonders. Please hear me. Now, many people can claim they walk in miracles. Miracles are not stories. They are provable realities here and now. Sincerely, it may not be everybody who will take this grace, but from the depth of my spirit, I stand in agreement with the leaders the men and the women of god that grace that commands miracles signs and wonders lord upon us many ministers here in the name of jesus take that fire now take that fire now i activate the healing grace the healing anointing like fire let it come upon your life Hallelujah. Hold on, please. Listen to me. Please listen. We're wrapping up. I want to plead with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do all within your power to invite your loved ones for tonight's miracle service. I'm going to share with you something. And there is a grace that I'm going to pray for you for. We are not only going to celebrate miracles tonight. But I pray from the depth of my heart. That there are activations of the gifts of the spirit that will happen tonight. Very strange dimensions of the spirit will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray finally before I drop the mic. If you are in ministry here and no one has been able to discern your grace to place a demand on your grace and to honor that grace listen we are ministers of God but we are humans too your comfort is lies in the fact that men can see what God is doing in your life they can discern it and they can extend hands of fellowship and hands of reward are we together now you cannot indefinitely live under the atmosphere of discouragement. Let me pray for someone. I don't know what has caged your ministry. And refused you from rising to a point of kingdom notoriety. For the sake of his majesty. But in the name of Jesus, I open that door now. Hallelujah. So please... 
I will beckon on the pastors as much as you can. Invite your members or at least your leaders, some of the key leaders in your ministry, so that they can come and receive this impartation. And tonight, I'm not just going to be praying alone. Something prophetic will happen here. In the course of my ministration, I'm going to invite a few seasoned servants of God here and they are going to be speaking over the territory. Let me tell you, whatever is dead in your life must come back to life in this country. Do not forget that you are coming with your requests. For your loved ones who are not within this city or around the southeast and may not make it, please call them to send it by way of text and then you write it. When people come, somewhere in the service will receive it in the bowls and we're going to pray here and in the name of jesus i'm telling you this what will happen in your life will surprise you in the name of jesus christ i'm going to be praying for the sick tonight will be glorified Father, whilst your word comes, I pray that you will heal every sick body in this place. I pray that you will deliver every oppressed in this place. I pray that our lives will be thoroughly transformed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we decree and declare that our hearts are opened. Open to learn, open to receive. And we declare that in all of this, you remain glorified in our lives. You remain glorified in this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to bring the word of God. I want to appreciate the entire leadership of this great um, commission i also want to honor the bishops here present and all the servants of god the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i want to share a few things tonight i'm just trusting to walk with time and my heart is burdened because there's, there's a lot that the Lord would have me share and I, I just trust that God will grant grace. I believe that conferences like these are moments of transformation. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror. He says, we are changed from one level of glory even to the other. Hallelujah. It matters that we understand the word of God. It matters that we understand the principles of the kingdom. Because our dominion and our walking in victory depend on one our knowledge of god and number two a thorough understanding of his ways the victory of the believer please just reduce or just just let it be if you can't find anything please let's not let's minimize distraction um so i believe that the lord is going to grant us grace and help us to understand scripture it is important that we study scripture because the bible represents the boundary of god's commitment to man god is not committed to man outside of the provisions allocated and allowed by scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture the bible says which is able to make thee wise unto salvation and so the knowledge of the scripture exposes us to God's methodologies. We are able to understand his way of doing things. And when we sustain the grace to engage accordingly, then our lives become a reflection of what he has said. Many years ago, I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw a great door. 
it was a very big door god was opening me up to a thorough understanding of the value of the word of god i saw an ancient door and the spirit of the lord took me close to that door and then i found out that that door was made up of other smaller doors and i noticed in that vision the doors were opening and closing opening and closing and each time the door opened light will come out of it and then it will close open again and light would come out of it and i noticed on every door a scripture was written and then the holy spirit began to let me know that those doors represented revelations and different dimensions of god remember jesus said i am the door and so every dimension of spiritual reality that you lay hold of the light that comes is the grace that empowers you to walk in the reality of that scripture that means whatever you propose to know if you do not have the grace to demonstrate its validity it is not yet life to you it says they are life not to those that seek them those that find them are we blessed praise the lord all over the world believers seek to walk in victory when you ask the average believer he will tell you that he wants a consolation to his christian experience and while it is true that we do not serve the lord and we do not seek him because of things in god's economy he so designed that somewhere along the line as you walk with him you get to a point where your life begins to bear fruit are we together john 15 and verse 8 he says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples so he desires that somewhere in our christian experience we begin to produce results that become an evidence to unbelievers that we are serving a living god as well as become consolations to us but then results in this kingdom of all sorts they do not just come because we desire them they come when we have access to the requisite level of spiritual illumination jesus wept over jerusalem the bible says he lamented and he said oh jerusalem jerusalem if you have known even in this your day the things that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hid from you so there are things that pertain unto our peace there are things that pertain unto our growth there are things that pertain unto our efficiency and i'm trusting that god is going to grant grace as we explore a few keys along the theme of this conference i read carefully through the letter that um, was written and given to me from the ministry and i could discern the passion of this church for revival for the move of god to see that the purposes of god are birthed in a territory like this and by the grace of god and with all humility i am a student of revival i have studied the moves of god across almost every continent i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these people and i've heard firsthand from them what god did in their days because it is a desire that we become a continuation are we together now a continuation so that it will no longer be fables that we were told but we will be able to prove the validity of god to a generation otherwise there will come another generation that knew not pharaoh and they will now begin to detest the things that we cherish and hold as sacred there must be a dimension of spiritual reality that must be preserved otherwise a whole generation will come and detest god god will become like a historic material we will just know that once upon a time there were people in enugu who were passionate about god once you see let me tell you this the way the devil destroys a generation is not to cause a catastrophe in one day or one year the way the devil destroys a generation is to study its system of continuity please understand this when the devil finds out that the fathers are so 
covenanted to God, they will not backslide. He will give up on the fathers. But he will make sure the bridge that translates that knowledge and that passion from the fathers to the children is caught. Respectfully speaking, this is what has destroyed the West. The American nations and all of that. Their grandmothers and their grandfathers, those we call God's generals, while they were there in the field doing the things they were doing, the devil distracted them with the here and now, and they did not think of a system of continuity. Are we together? So Satan gave up on the parents and went to grow with the children. Now the children are the presidents, they are the governors, and they are very vocal and unashamed about their desire for the absence of God in their community. It is not enough that we know God. We must study the system allocated for the transference of these things. In ancient times, you would see that the Lord would instruct the fathers. He said, write it on tablets. When your children ask you, why are you doing this? Tell them, once upon a time, something happened like this. Hallelujah. In every generation, God seems to find a few people. Now, I don't know why it is a few people, but I may be able to attempt tonight why it seems like only very few people are able to qualify to host certain superior dimensions of the grace, the power, the glory, the wisdom of God within the context of a generation. So it looks like you have people just being average in their work with God, churchgoers here and there, loving God, serving, and then every once in a while you will find men and women who press exceptionally into the things of God. And as a result, of that encounter, they come up with anointings and graces and very, very striking dimensions of God. And those individuals become the, the signposts. They become representations of God's desire within that dispensation. And then when those people leave, usually people go down again and then they wait and one day Catherine Kuhlman will come up, then one day a Smith Wigglesworth will come up, and then one day so on and so forth, even in the history of this nation, and I believe the history of this city, when you study from a spiritual standpoint, you will find out that scattered across your history were moments when certain individuals came with fire and power and they commanded dimensions of revival and fire. There was such an awakening within that territory. And it is my goal in this conference that I will share with us a bit that the Lord has taught me about preserving the fire of revival within a territory. It is possible that men can capture the realities of God and preserve it transgenerationally. It does not have to be lost with the absence of a generation. Are we blessed already? Now, I, I am sent to the body of Christ, as you would have observed. I make it a point of duty to not criticize the body of Christ. It is not my culture at all to talk about maybe churches or say anything negative. No. I am sent to the body. And one of the requirements to carry a grace that is for the body is you must love the body. If you love God and hate the body, you are still defaulting. You must love God and love his body. Are we together? And I have found out that, respectfully speaking, one of the reasons why many people are very weak spiritually, why many people do not host certain dimensions of God, among many reasons, there is a theology that has been sold, especially this generation. And the theology is that there is no participation and there is no price required to host God. And it looks like a well-meaning theology. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak anything you want it to say. So that, that, that indoctrination that... Um, 
God can use anybody he wants to use. It doesn't matter who has created a justification for laxity in the body of Christ. So people do not have the passion to press towards the things of God because it looks like there is no profit in pressing into God. Let me tell you this, people of God, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. If everything were a gift, what then is the reward for obedience? Are we together? Deuteronomy 28, when you read from verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Then it begins to list, it says, Then you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a participatory condition that guarantees certain dimensions of the presence of God. And I think that this, this understanding needs to be restored to the body of Christ. There is a price for spiritual power. There is a price to host God. There is a price to carry an anointing for a generation. There is a real price. It's a non-negotiable price. It's not a price that can be politicized. It's not a price that can be manipulated by emotions. The price is fixed. You either obtain the grace. What God gives is the grace to pay that price. Listen, remember when the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus to negotiate positions for them? Because the way they saw the invincibility of Jesus and they suspected that one day this man would dethrone Herod and he would become the king of the Jews. And so before that would happen, James and John liars with their mother to buy a comfortable political position for them. Should in case Jesus dethrone Herod, that they will sit at the left and right. And so the mother comes with this request, Dear Jesus, would you grant that after you are done with this Roman people, grant that my sons will sit at your left and right. Jesus never said the space was not vacant. He said, here is the condition. Can you drink? Jesus is talking now, not an angel. Can you drink of my cup? Number one. Number two, can you be baptized? Notice that one works within you and one works outside you. Conditions. Can you drink of my cup? And then can you be baptized with my baptism? There is a price for the power of God. You don't just tell somebody from a wheel to stand up because you read it in the Bible, that they shall lay hands on the sick. Remember that many people taught us that it's costly to experiment like this in the Bible. One time Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples wanted to use the opportunity to cash in on that moment and make a name for themselves. And they did not look for a mild case that was manageable. They got an epileptic patient and then they gathered the people and they prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. They were embarrassed, their egos were stung, and when Jesus came, they said, why couldn't we cast this out? Remember again the sons of Sceva. They came and gathered someone who was a demoniac, and they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, that's the real Jesus. You thought he would just show up because his name was called, and the demons replied, Jesus we know. Paul we know. He says, who are you? Where do you stand in the spirit? I do not see the scar that represents your passing through the skin of the spirit. And the Bible says, those demons beat them and drove them out. Please hear me. You don't just speak and people's lives change because the Bible said, no, no. We will continue to mock ourselves and propose spiritual things we do not have the grace to defend if we are unwilling to pay a real, solid spiritual price. The centurion comes to Jesus and is making a request over his daughter. And Jesus said, I respect you, you're a noble man, I will go with you to your house. And the 
and children said, no, I am a man under authority. In other words, I understand government and the implication of authority. You too, you are a man under authority. I'm under the authority of the government of Rome. And there is a level of power that I have by reason of that authority. I can tell one, go, and he will go. And if he does not go, the authority that backs me will come to address that situation. And Jesus said, I have not found such revelation. Who mentored you? Who taught you this? That our exploits in the kingdom is based on the government we submit to. Where did you find this revelation? There is a lot, and I'm saying this respectfully, there is a lot of talking in the body of Christ. There is a lot of proposition of what God can do. God can heal. God can change your life. And then we keep saying amen, amen. But our frustrations continue to grow. Because it's like the more we are attending church, the more we are getting away from God. There is no consolation to the reality of the power of God. Psalm 63, David began to speak and he said, Oh God, Thou art my God. He says, Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. My heart pants for you as in a dry and weary land. He says, To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Oh. Let me tell you this. Our churches and our appeals are under attack. If we do not bring the demonstration of the reality of heaven here and now, a day will come, your child will look at you and say, until the day you prove the reality of Jesus, do not talk to me about church again. The generation of our fathers is a generation of loyalty. Even if they don't believe you, they have a covenant of loyalty. They will pray for you and leave you in your confusion while they believe you. This generation is an arrogant, scientific generation. They will not believe without results. The Bible says the Greek looks for a sign. This is the reason why our teenagers today have such an obsession for the things, technology and all of this, and they detest God. You mention anything God. They are in church, they are browsing, they, they absolutely you are there crying about an encounter you had for years and they, they cannot relate to this. The devil is coming as a bridge between yesterday and tomorrow. And if we do not restore the authentic power and the grace of God to our people and the church, we will be surprised. Are we together? I don't mean to bring bad memories, forgive me if I do, but how many of you had the opportunity to watch warehouses that were boggled during this palliative time? No invitation, no poster, there was something in that building that people passionately desired and they were not ashamed to leave their houses and climb roofs. What if what is in that house is in your church? Spiritually speaking. Listen, now forgive me. I came to do something to you. We will apologize after the conference. Are we together? The rate at which we beg people to come to church, the rate at which we slap this money on publicity, the rate at which we are on our knees pleading is a sign that something is not authentic in what we are communicating. Jesus is with a woman by the well. And then he began to speak to her. Discerning he was a prophet, she began to ask him on the subject of worship. And when Jesus responded to this woman, watch this. The Bible says this woman went and called back. Do you know the gospel was designed that if it really impacts you, you cannot be silent. There were people who Jesus begged and said, don't tell anybody. They were too grateful to be quiet. There is something about the reality of this fake life we propose that is not yet true in our lives. Now this is not an insult. Believers, we are challenging ourselves. If it is true that we desire the spirit of revival in this conference, then we have to be serious. The sick come sick. 
and we say Jesus can heal and then we share the grace and while we are on their way going home here comes Satan it's not only Jesus he tempted he will follow everybody and say does this look like that revelation of love the more we read the Bible the more we do not see him in our, in our churches I was young and now I am old, we say. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor to seek bread for bread. But is that not a lie? How many believers beg for bread every day? We seem to be at the mercy of situations and circumstances. Watch this. A charm is placed on the ground. That charm did not ask me whether I believe in it or not. I marked it on my way going. The charm did not ask whether I have faith or not. And it still affected me. Can you imagine that? I'm giving you an example of the experience of many Christians. A charm is on the ground. The charm did not ask you, do you believe I will hurt you? Uh -huh. It didn't care whether you believed or not. And you marched it and all of a sudden something began to happen to you. Oh God, restore your glory and your power back to the church. There are too many things we propose without the grace requirement to defend them. And the world used to be quiet, but now the world is beginning to ask questions. Oh dear church, they will search for scriptures and say, come and defend it. You told us that God can restore. Here is a woman with 23 years of captivity and all her life she's been serving the purposes of God. Can you prove to us that God restores? And we stand there quoting scripture and saying all kinds of things and the onlooker who is looking says, this your Jesus, there is a question mark. Is God challenging someone tonight? There is no continent that prays like Africa. And yet we are the ones in need of results every day. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Are we together? Financially speaking, there are many, many believers who are in situations, they are givers, they love God, they tithe, they sow, they give, and yet in a shocking way, they never rise to a notable dimension. I'm not talking of just having your needs met. That's not prosperity. You don't need God for that to happen. You just need wisdom. Not even the wisdom of the word. Sophia, the wisdom that comes by studying the laws of nature. I share with you my contemplations and I share with you what began to lead me to seek for God beyond church, to seek for God beyond religion, to seek for God beyond Bible studies and prayer meetings. I knew something was wrong. The Bible says, Proverbs 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man, having separated himself, he said, seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. Something is wrong. I won't take too much of your time, but I need to challenge you. When we talk about revival, did you know for the average person, we don't even have an idea of what we are talking about. We just feel all the time when people will just pray for a few minutes and then backslide whenever they feel like doing, and then we just know that in 1995 there was such a move of God. No, sir. And yet we say the part of the justice as a shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Let God be true. Let God be true. Any good state, let God be true. My experience is too small to validate who God is. If, if my experience does not capture all the dimensions of God, I cannot create a theology out of my limitation to mean God cannot do it. God will not bend to us. We are the ones who will bend to say, Lord, I take responsibility. There is something about my Christian experience that is not capturing the fullness of you. Are we blessed? Yes.
oh I am a prophet God called me to be a prophet every prophetic word is wrong it didn't come to pass everything you say is wrong your name is John he said no my name is not John but something is wrong look let me tell you this listen I'm not being sarcastic I want to be sincere with you it takes humility and brokenness to admit don't fake what can be real insist and say something is wrong I may not know what is right but oh God come to me the strength of God does not look for strength the strength of God looks for weakness when he finds strength he will go back until there is a broken and a contrite heart having said all this let me announce to you that revival is real Having said all this, let me announce to you that God is still in the business of making men and shifting territories and continents. Just because that reality may not be captured in your space personally does not mean God stopped working because of you. You may have stopped pressing into God, but he did not stop moving people. There are people who, who did not graduate themselves from that school. They said, Lord, I ever remain a student. And God has continued to advance the frontiers of the kingdom through them. And it is my prayer and my desire tonight that God will cultivate a hunger and a passion greater than ministry title greater than preaching greater than conferences a depth of hunger to host and deliver a dimension of kingdom reality that confounds principalities and powers while you are seated can you pray one minute and say Lord plant a dissatisfaction in my heart Granted dissatisfaction. I'm tired of Greek and Hebrew words without a grace to demonstrate their validity. Please pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. This is 25 years of the faithfulness of God. There has to be a dimension of substance to our Christian experience. Someone is praying. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Call upon me, he says, and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Pray for one minute. Shela parus kada branda kada bala haske de bala. Lord, we desire to see your power and your glory in Enugu State once again. We desire altars to be places of fire. We desire to see sinners saved with forceful power. We desire to see a reign of signs and wonders again. We cannot lose this heritage. There must be a generation that becomes a continuation of this. Listen, listen. I went to church and I heard my pastors preach from scripture. They said many things about God. They said God is love. I heard them preach scriptures like if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more your heavenly father. I preach, I heard them preach messages like he has been made the head of all principalities but I could not see the substance the validation of that which was said 
while they were preaching i was watching the sick who sat close to me i was watching families i knew were in trouble where is this god we are talking about and then we say he's in our midst let's worship him and we finish and sit down and i said but when god came in the bible i know what happened i read my bible the bible says the mountains keep like lambs when he comes and yet he's there and we are browsing pinging on our phones is it the god of heaven even angels when they appeared the impact was too much for men to ignore them something is wrong the eyes observe my ways the first two words is a declaration of an acknowledgement you are my son that means on legitimate grounds you qualify to be a partaker of everything that i have my son not a stranger my son then give me your heart there are not many times god demands things from men but every time god does demand a thing from a man it is because he's preparing him to receive something higher and greater and he says my son you want to be used as a general to the nations my daughter my church my territory if you want to be mightily used by god listen to me the first key is not anointing the first key is not fasting the first key is not prayer the first key is not bible study you can do all those things and yet miss it because many have tried it and it did not work the first key to being mightily used by God is the state of your heart. The state of your heart vetoes your prayer life. The state of your heart vetoes your fasting. Every other thing finds its credence from the purity of your heart. Are we together? My son, I desire to use you, but the state of your heart. Do you know why God is always after the heart of men i will tell you why because in his design of man he created the heart of man to be able to host him and him alone and in that design whatever finds its way to your heart is your god please observe this your god is not what you worship your god is whatever finds a place in your heart it doesn't matter what you worship physically in the realm of the spirit they know what you bow to not by searching a deity they search your heart god designed the heart of a man to be the mirror of his allegiance whatever can have access to that holy of holies in your heart qualifies to be your god are we together so he created the heart of man to be able to host him and his purposes so when you sing and when you preach before heaven takes you seriously the word of god that is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart will have to vet the purity of your heart god does not just accept worship because it is melodious god does not just accept preaching because you are conjuring greek and hebrew words as theologically powerful as they may be until god finds your heart contrite broken sincere enough every other thing you are doing is just religion jeremiah 17 and verse 9 the heart of man my son give me your heart complete surrender please read with me if you can see it otherwise i'll just read it from here the bible says the heart is deceitful above all things stop before you understand this scripture you have to array the many things that can be deceptive one of the things that is deceptive is the serpent now the serpent was more deceptive than all of the beasts which the lord had made there are many other things that are deceptive but the bible says no matter how wise a man is your heart will beat you to your knees that means even you the owner of the heart you can be deceived by it your heart can deceive you into believing something that is not true the heart is deceitful above all things and the bible says the heart is desperately wicked 
oh God bless me and you will see what I will do for the kingdom and God says I don't need to bless you to see it I'm already seeing it now because you see in God's realm I hope you know that God how do I say this now God does not live in eternity no I hope you know eternity is also a function of time eternity just means time without end it's a summation of infinite dispensations but it's still subject to time God's realm is not in time God's realm is not even in eternity God's realm is not even heaven he just put his throne there read your Bible it says in the beginning God created that means he was not there you can't create what you are inside in the beginning where was he he created the heavens and the earth that means he was he was in neither of the places the realm of God is called light it's a realm that the Bible says is unapproachable light now please understand this in that realm there is no time and there is no distance in that realm there is no future and there is no past those realities don't exist in that realm everything is called now so your tomorrow is seen already are, are, are you together now now you see in this realm you don't know what I can become tomorrow I may be broke today and so my being well behaved may not be a true picture of my heart condition it's just that the situation has forced me to carry a posture of humility so men can call you humble until the day you see the heart of man hides evil like a DNA it does not be, it does not get activated until the conditions there are sufficient conditions that make certain levels of evil to be activated if you have never tasted fame you may not know that you can be derailed so you can just say God forbid I love God with all my heart remember you've never been honored you've never stood before kings this is why criticizing people is dangerous when you hear that someone is not doing well go back to your own altar and say God before I disgrace myself vet my heart now search my heart try my thoughts let me tell you this listen to my message why revivals die there is only one reason why revivals die not sin no the humanity of men is the reason why revivals die revivals die because the custodian of that revival is a man and satan knows that there is something in a man prophet isaiah began to observe it and he says has thou not known has thou not seen he says the everlasting god the lord creator of the ends of the earth does not faint neither is he weary this is a quality that is prevalent with men satan knows that no matter how powerful i am i will be tired one day he knows that so when he tries to attack your vision from the beginning and it does not work he will leave you you will think you are free he left jesus he waited till they offended him till jesus was on his way to the cross here he comes again satan is any other thing but a fool he has an advantage of time the bible calls him that old serpent he has lived through dispensation and he has studied man like an experiment he knows man in and out so when he sees you as a preacher with your zeal he knows there is no money in your pocket yet you've never flown a first class you don't know what it means to be honored so you don't even have any ego to be strong so you think you are humble and satan waits for you at the corridor of your lifting he knows there is something with men that both glory and shame produces the same result it can frustrate you Are we together? Yes. So the day you lead the prayer and mighty things begin to happen. Do you know Alexander Doway? The first time they called him Elijah, he rebuked them. He said, No, I can't be Elijah. This humility. But over time, he thought to himself and said, But honestly, come to think of it, who else? Because at that time there was no internet. You will not even know God is also working at the other side of your ignorance. God knows men very well. That's why he does not trust what you say till he sees what is in your heart. 
have you not seen men who say i will stand with you forever i will build maybe a ministry or i will be with you in politics i must vote you and while they are saying that quarter to their to when you will need them they will change god knows the ever-changing nature of men so he does not trust anything you say i hope you know while you sing your heart is also singing while you preach your heart is also preaching the salmon of your heart is greater than that of your lips or they call you joshua selman it doesn't matter death has worked in you so that life will work through you even to others the vulnerability of men cannot allow god to use them the way they are you come as you are but you are not sent as you are you come as you are then you are made then you are sent the making process of a believer is the hardest part of the christian experience because not even your tears will stop god is god speaking to us look when you see a man in his spiritual training it's a fearful thing others are sleeping in the night and god wakes you and says for the next five hours you just prepare your, your swallow and fish and you are about to fold your arms and the spirit of god says for the next 10 days there is no food that is entering your mouth again god what what are you doing to me can't i enjoy a normal life it is the call of destiny tracing you 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 no longer can live a normal life a gentleman comes to look at you and say you're a beautiful lady and you hear a rebuke from the holy ghost you don't know who is coming from your womb that's why and you are saying lord so i can't enjoy my life again the making of men is hard that's why when god makes them whether you talk about them in the secret or in the open even if you are right their altar will fight you because the making of men is the is death the process of death he suffered no man to do them wrong even he rebuked kings for their sake saying this is the injunction please are you getting blessed tonight the state of your heart every man you see that is carrying a measure of the grace of god has gone through an experience you may never know all of the men and women whose names were called here that you see them if they ask every one of these people come and hold a mic and share your experience tonight we will cry as if it's a funeral here many people will tell you the things they gave up you will never carry glory without dying the price for all of god is all of you not your offering not your tithe not your singing all of you a non-negotiable condition casting crowns lifting hands bowing hearts is what we've come to do i cast my crown i lift my hands my heart is what I've come to do. I cast my crown, lift my hands, bow my heart. Listen, God will not ask you to just give any money. He wants you to give the one you worked for. The one you got free is Ishmael. The one you worked for is Isaac. It's easy to give Ishmael. Abraham drove Ishmael without thinking about it. Let me tell you how God makes mighty men in this kingdom. He does not take Ishmael. Isaac is the price for being Abraham. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Go and offer him upon a mountain. Abraham held Isaac, his future, a representation of his worth, and dragged him to the mountain. Isaac said, Father, what did I do to you? And he said, before you arrived, I was in love with someone, and not even your presence will interrupt that relationship. We will rise, sing your name, 
training is why God isolates you even if you are married this is not an affair of a couple when God is dealing with men there's no corporate thing uh -uh. that dimension is a lonely part your dealing is customized it's in that place of pain your hand begins to shake and then he trains you that anywhere you see this is the healing anointing it's not a doctrine it's a dealing for only you it's in that place of pain John remained in the wilderness there were secrets that were told John to make him a prophet. He was eating locust and wild honey. That was not the only food in Israel. But that was the prescription that would train him to be able to be the prophet that will ordain Jesus. Listen, when God is making you, the restrictions in your life, will, God can give you her. Oh God can say for the next three years from 12 to 3 that is the time I have a portion to meet with you don't miss it and by 11 30 you are tired and it's as if you will die he wants to teach you how to give up on your own strength and tap into his own because the schedule that you have in ministry will require that knowledge there is a spiritual architecture he's teaching you that they that wait upon the Lord there is a system where weak men can become strong so when he wakes you when you are tired it's not wickedness it's the training that makes mighty men so that when you have a busy schedule in the future they see you standing from whence cometh this unusual strength oh samson and samson said it is not my physical might there is a spirit that can manifest as the spirit of might listen there are dimensions of god you can never learn in church you will never understand it it is your experience that will educate you into who God is. A testimony that you will have by yourself. Your training will give God a name that your generation will call. The God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, they were not generic names. They were an encapsulation of the experiences of men with God. Your assignment is to use your lifetime to give God a name that your children can call. What name is your experience giving God? You only know the God of Abraham, I congratulate you. But when will your experience give him a name that others can call? So there are people who will stand and lift up one song and his Shekinah will fill that place because the altar upon which their training was built is alive. There is an altar in the realm of the spirit. There is a covenant that they have with God. There are realms that cannot be imparted. Dig through your pain and your sacrifice. We live in a generation where we like receiving everything by impartation. No, sir. Apostle, God is calling me to be a kingdom financier. And one day God says, aside from the clothes you are wearing, fold everything in a bag and sew it. You will cast that spirit thinking it's a demon. It will come again. God speaks once, but you don't hear only once. He will make you hear as many times as your unbelief wants. Listen, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Let me tell you, when you see people who truly carry authentic power and grace, find out the story behind their training. Oh God, you are my God. Heli, timing matters in seeking God because it takes time to know him. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. When I began my experience with God, I was not looking for fame. I was not looking for power. I was just tired. I said, Lord, we cannot serve a God we don't know to a generation. We give a generation a gift to the unknown God. A God we do not know 
a God who are proposition about him, we are not sure. You finish preaching a message, man of God, very boldly, and you go back to your room and secretly say, I hope I understand what I just said. Paul said, but I know whom I believe. I am persuaded. It's the reason why many people cannot die for Jesus. Because we are not even sure of what we are living for. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. And the Bible says that they without us would not be complete. Hear me. Truly speaking, there is a generation rising. Jesus will not return until there is the manifestation of that power. I have seen it. I have seen it many times in my vision. That Africa, God's firstborn, the stone that has been rejected. The stone that identified with Jesus on his way to the cross. Every continent rejected Jesus except Africa. In a man called Simon of Cyrene. That was Africa carrying the cross for Jesus. And since we partook of his sufferings, we must also partake of his glory. It is the reason why Africa will become the centerpiece of revival. It's not a lie. My son, give me your heart. You have been giving me your offering. But give me your heart. You have been giving me your midweek service. But give me your heart. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. That in the year King Uzziah died. Something must die for you to see the Lord. For as long as Uzziah is alive your eyes cannot see him. In the year that my pride died I saw the Lord. In the year that my ego died I saw the Lord. In the year that my ambition died I saw the Lord. In the year that my, my passion to make a name for myself died I saw the Lord. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth the train of his road fills the temple that's what Isaiah saw a cloud of heavenly worshippers surrounding your throne and we join with them now crying holy Holy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Let me tell you this. When you want to be used by God, the price is not to give you a message. The price is not to find a PA that follows you. The price is not to find an empty venue where you will do a publicity. No. The price is that he must become your obsession lord i love you more than ministry i love you more than titles the bible says love not the world apostle john began to tell us neither the things that are in this world is the word eros there is an affinity that this cosmos seeks to derive from men it wants an attachment my car my reputation my church my member that is the language of ownership in this kingdom we are only given access not ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom because whoever owns anything maintains it the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership the day ownership came lack came suffering came and he came back to himself and said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here eating the husk of pigs he said i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and when he took responsibility and began to return he never met the father at home because for every step you take towards God he's also looking for you too you will meet somewhere in your passion today many people say they see Jesus all the time I respect their experiences but their lives does not show it if it's the Jesus of the Bible you see I assure you even after one year you will not be normal I love 
love, I love. I love your presence. It's not a song. That I love, I love more than ministry. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. It says, No eye hath seen, no ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love Him. Not them that preach about Him, not them that sing about Him, not them that conduct service for Him, not them that sweep the church for Him. Thank God for these things. But, brothers and sisters, the non negotiable condition to carry God is that you must so die that He becomes he becomes the epicenter of your self-worth and your relevance until he finds himself in you like a mirror looking back to him you will never host his power the presence of God is not cheap no the price you pay for life is death and until that price is paid you will never carry the life that liberates nations this I learned from the Spirit of God. This I have seen in the life of people that have been used by God. It is a lonely path. Brothers and sisters, it is a painful path. And men of God, respectfully speaking, let me encourage us. When we are teaching people about what God did in our lives, let's not tell lies. Let's tell them the truth of what happened. That it took time. To know God. Let's let them know that we fasted. It was not just that we were standing in the afternoon and power came. Let them understand the implication of the grace they so cheaply enjoy. Let them understand that it came with blood and tears. Not to scare them, but to let them know this is how it happens. The birth of anything valuable is painful. Ask every woman here, she will tell you. She can carry the child because the woman is pregnant her appetite will change a woman who ordinarily eats this will start asking you to give her rice that is smelling smoke and you are saying madam what are you looking for that's what happens when you are pregnant when you are carrying something of destiny you cannot do what everybody is doing it must alter even your appetites am I blessing you This generation must have archived in books and in their minds. Every territory must preserve not just what God did, but preserve the ordinances that were kept that brought him to a land. Enugu states, let your children and your children's children understand the formula that brings God to a territory. Let them not just know history that God can come. Let them know that it takes sacrifice and surrender. Let them know that it takes a life of dedication. Total surrender. Non-negotiable surrender. That everything God gives you belongs to Him. And He can make a demand of it any day and any time. I cried unto God and I said, Father... If there is anything I cannot give you in my life, take it by yourself. Do you know there are times you cannot give Isaac? Oh? Remember, it took long before he came. You only give God the grace to take the Isaac by himself. Are you getting blessed? This is why we do not see the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm seeing angels in this place. The Lord is opening my eyes and I see angels in this place. I see angels in this place. I'm seeing the number 21 in the spirit. And I'm seeing oil being poured on those people right now as I'm speaking. 
please bring them out if you can 21 this is what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit 21 the spirit of revival is in this place. I'm seeing the number 21. And the Lord is saying you are drinking of ancient fountains. There is an awakening happening in your spirit. For some of you, the dreams that you have been having, there is a quickening. You saw it in the dream. Some of you even saw these meetings in your visions. The spirit of grace is initiating you into an experience that produces power in the spirit. And Jacob wrestled with him all night and said, leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. And he touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him. And the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel, the face of God. When he comes, you will know he has come. There is a circumcision that is happening in this place. A cutting away of appetites. He says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12 and verse 1, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Then he says, to not be conformed to this world. It's the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this system. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove that which is good and perfect will of God bring them out you call it a wind of revival and ignition God is doing something not only in this church but even in this city hallelujah now please watch this forgive me I hope I'm not breaking any protocol please forgive me if I do but in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I'm seeing fire just rising from this place and I'm seeing it come on people those people will start running out by themselves please hold them so they don't injure anybody I'm seeing a grace it's a grace that will drive you to the secret place Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 Stand in the ancient parts Ask for that part That ancient part my son, give me your heart. Man of God, give me your ministry. Give me your reputation. This is the price for all of me. This is the price for commanding power in the spirit. Wherever you are in one minute, can you just open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit? Lord, I'm ready to hand over everything. Let tonight be a handover service. Hallelujah. Listen.
listen. Please listen. Listen. When you take everything that is within your heart and you surrender it on the altar of sacrifice and you tell him everything belongs to you now you begin to do business with God because all that you have is his own it all belongs to you oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you before God in the next five minutes I leave you alone with God and say father search my heart try my thoughts you know the tendencies that are in my heart prune my heart oh God take away flesh take away pride take away fame glory from my life purify my heart in truth the next five minutes cry before your maker and if you say are you praying the cry that brings revival
more minutes. Take everything, oh God. Everything that has taken your place. Until Jesus is seen and glorified in my life. Take everything, oh God. minutes don't be tired of crying you came here for an awakening I surrender to
seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith the Bible says who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame lift your voice and say father anything that has taken your place in my life I dethrone it in this conference everything that has taken your place in my life whether it is relationships whether it is material things whether it is ministry whatever it is please pray and we are done for tonight's meeting.
24 the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell therein for he has founded it upon the waters and established it upon the seas and then the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place he says he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation then he says this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face O jacob Father, we are praying in this place tonight. We lay down our pride. We lay down our ambitions. We lay down our reputations for your glory. We lay down our personal desires, O God. Every weight that besets us, we lay it down. We desire to see you glorified in this church. We desire to see you glorified in any good state. Father, no matter what you are doing in Africa, don't leave us behind. May we be part of your program. As you are raising generals, so God, do not leave Enugu out. As you are raising mighty revivalists, do not leave this state out. There's going to be a great awakening. It's my prophecy to this state. There's going to be a great revival in your land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. That people will begin to get born again in the market. They will get born again in the banks. They will get born again in schools. The fire of the Holy Ghost will begin to fall upon your streets. The fire of the fire will begin to fall in small groups. Prayer warriors will begin to arise. Little groups will begin to arise. Men and women of fire. Women who are like Deborah will begin to arise in this city. Women of fire who understand the ordinances of the Spirit.
we really appreciate you for watching our videos like comment share and subscribe thank you